Good afternoon. This is Adam Phillips coming to you live with our correspondent in Valverde, Stephen E. D'Souza. And Good. Stephen, yeah. what is the situation there, sir? Oh, hello. Yes. Uh, fortunately, uh, my credentials from my days as a journalist were still valid. So after a very narrow escape from the rebels, I've been allowed to uh, embed with them. They are 100% behind, of course, the uh, movement to remove Presidente for life, who is uh, still uh, recovering from an unspecified illness with his wife running the country in his stead with an iron fist and a velvet glove. And yeah. Sheena seems to be the rallying cry for the revolution here. And, and what is the story behind this mysterious figure? <laughs> Well, it's very strange. Uh, some people say she fulfills an ancient legend of the indigenous Amazonian people uh, about the daughter of Pacamama, uh, and uh, basically our mother Earth figure, uh, mm. who's a protector of the rainforest. And there seems to be some strange connection with a uh, wealthy heiress here in the country, but uh, the, the connections are very tenuous with uh, Rachel Rivington Cardwell, uh, who is the strange granddaughter of the uh, family that's been ravaging this country for 50 years. Well, it sounds like a, a bad situation all around. I hope you're staying safe uh, on the ground there. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm here deep behind the Forbidden Zone, which is a zone of prohibita, which uh, the corrupt government agreed never to exploit. But there's constant like uh, uh, oil well drilling and uh, forcing indigenous people uh, into servitude in illegal mines. We're very close to uh, La Madre uh, Falls, uh, which are a world heritage site, this giant waterfall. Mm. You may be able to hear it in the background. Some people who visited from America say it stra sounds strangely like a jacuzzi pump, but you know, I, I wouldn't know. But yes, I see what you're saying. And now people can catch up in this uh, on the situation there if they pick up Sheena Queen of the Jungle number nine, which is on sale in comic book stores on uh, September 28th. Is that what is that correct? That's right. And it uh, really is a culmination of a lot of stories and threads that have been uh, percolating here for, for some time. Uh, your uh, readers may be very surprised to open uh, the first two pages of this and discover themselves transported back to the waiting days of World War II and the ship's log of a Nazi super sub that is on its way from beleaguered Germany to Japan mm. with uh, prototypes of jet planes and missiles capable of re reaching the United States from Japan. This mission threatens to like change the course of World War II. Uh, and uh, how we get to that period of 75 years ago is uh, connected to the legendary lost city uh, in Valverde, mm. which uh, people have been searching for for hundreds of years. Uh, it's been called El Dorado. It's been called uh, Pietati, which is the native term for it. Mm. Um, and uh, some people say this ancient civilization had technology, you know, equal or even beyond our own. One thing is certain is that China has stumbled upon some ancient temples in her jungle since her teenage years, uh, which had portals which could transport one across time and space. And uh, followers of the Sheena book may remember uh, several years ago, one of these portals took her back um, uh, uh, almost 100 years to London, where she met a certain Lord Greystone. In um, The Lords of the Jungle, uh, also published another factual, incontestable factual piece published by Dynamite, where uh, Tarzan, basically handed the reins of protecting the rainforest in the 21st century uh, off to Sheena. Uh, another uh, one of these portals opened a door to a strange, unearthly dimension where bizarre creatures emerged into our world, uh, which uh, Sheena was only at the risk of her own life able to uh, shut the portal door. And this time, uh, she and her friends and her animal companions have been transported to an uncharted island in the Pacific, mm. where at the same moment, this... Uh, a Nazi submarine has run aground. This timeless island, when I say timeless, in issue number nine, how often do you get to see Nazis and dinosaurs in the same book? It's, it's unusual to say the least. <laughs> now, um, let me ask you, since we're heading into the finale issue, number 10, next what, what month. Should, what, 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 wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh it's, it's, just, uh, it's just our foraging party coming back with some food. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, I, I had no idea there was a McDonald's uh, here in Valverde. Anyway. Okay. 
<laughs> Since we're coming up to the finale in issue number 10 next month, can you give us any hints as to where this is going and what kind of plot threads we're going to see unravel? Well, uh, if you know me from my motion pictures, you know I like to like crank up the suspense and you know I like to juggle uh, multiple things at one time. Your nerves are racked as you wonder, uh, are the terrorists going to kill John McClane or are the <laughs> FBI agents going to kill John McClane? And is the building going to blow up? And has Hans Gruber figured out that that's his wife he has hostage? So uh, I, I, you want to have a cliffhanger, but I think that the cliffhanger here in, in issue number nine is about the only cliffhanger I've ever done. On the one hand, Sheena, it, it took a lot of them. It probably took a dozen men to bring her down. But the uh, local indigenous tribe, which he originally befriended, has had an internal revolution against uh, the matriarchs that have led their tribe for many, many generations. And they blame Sheena for the arrival of the, uh, of the Nazis, make, making the mistake that because she came with a couple of Europeans, that they're all in it together. And uh, she's been overpowered uh, with a, uh, some of the local indigenous drugs. Uh, otherwise, they never could have taken her down. And she's about to be sacrificed to their serpent god, which we've been talking about for four or five issues. Yes. And we've never seen. Uh, so we have no idea what that's like. But at the same moment, uh, she has been overpowered, staked out for the oncoming serpent god, uh, who is over two or three pages making a hell of a racket coming through the jungle uh, <laughs> towards us. At the same time, Bob and Ransom have been captured by the Nazis. Yes. Uh, and they have been mistaken for uh, OSS agents. As the uh, Nazi captain says to him, he says, uh, are you a time travelers? It's, explain why you've arrived in a plane from the 1940s. And Bob <laughs> says, it was all I could afford. I bought it at auction. <laughs> um, and uh, they, they tried to explain their time travels, but I have to acknowledge my uh, late friend Stan Lee. Um, to this day, I remember one of the stories in, there was a Tales of Astonish story about a scientist who was determined to meet Merlin the Magician. Ah. And he created a time machine, and he went back in time to Camelot to finally meet his hero, Merlin the Magician. And when the local villagers would say, who are you? He says, well, I'm a time traveler. Let me prove I'm a time traveler. And then he tried to attempt to prove he was a time traveler from the future. As hard as he tried, he could not convince them. So this stuck in my mind for 50 years. And I emulate this, I emulate this scene here where Bob and Ransom desperately try to prove that they are time travelers to the Nazis who captured him. But as he says, as the Nazi says, uh, he says, uh, you're obviously OSS agents. Uh, you're a soldier. Uh, to keep the uh, Ivy League intellectual in line, and you have a fetching local native as a guide, a typical OSS team in the South Pacific. So Sheena is staked out uh, for the uh, approaching monster. Oh, like, spoiler alert. Oh. It's some kind of monster. It's the, the, the <laughs> serpent god. Bob and Ransom are literally staked out in the surf with the rising tide. Uh. To, like you're gonna you're gonna tell us the truth about your, your secret OSS mission or drown, and Sheena's animal friends are about to be eaten by velociraptors. So this is where we leave everybody at the end of nine, and I think you're gonna have a spectacular payoff in issue ten. But get number nine, which is on sale next week, yes. and if you want to catch up on Sheena, there's a uh, you've got Lords of the Jungle, which is where she met Tarzan, and we first established these. Uh, portals to other places and times and dimensions and there i wonder if that's a government uh, plane surveilling for the uh, rebels well we're we're well <laughs> under tree canopy here so i i guess we're okay. okay uh and then of course there's been there's been several trade paperbacks of continuing yes. adventures machine and going back for five years now with uh, dynamite fantastic well it's great talking to you please stay safe we're going to take a look at the covers right now to issue number nine um please stop by your local comic shop as uh steven's been saying Make sure you pick up the issue, pick yeah. up the and, and, copies. And, and by the way, as, 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 we, as the rebels here say, Viva Valverde. <laughs> Viva Valverde. <laughs> All right, Stephen, we appreciate your time. We look forward to talking again soon. Good to see you. Good what? To see you oh, I'm well. sorry. It's my, turn. it's my turn to guard duty. All right. Good luck. <laughs>